So here's a process video of me painting the very first 20 minutes of Secret Date. Now when I'm working on recycled wood, as in this case, I always start with a little bit of water on there and then I start blocking in the composition. This is after I've spent some time staring at the plain wood, in this case not a plain piece of wood, but it's got some sort of peach paint on there and some nicks and scratches and stuff, so there's already a lot of character and I love this because it just sort of helps get the work underway. In this instance, I didn't really let those scratches or nicks or anything dictate the composition, but while staring at the board, I did immediately have this idea for a waterfall with a cave and a cliff and a little bit of a car. The rest kind of just sort of filled itself out as I went, you know, adding the clouds and all the, the foliage and stuff. That was a lot of detail work that came down the road. But as you can see, the very first part, just slapping it on, really loose, really messy. Most of the times I'm working flat so that the water isn't running off the board or creating drips or streaks. But because I wanted to video a little bit, I decided to prop it up and, and work this way to get it going. But later on, this piece spent a lot of time flat on a table with some washes and things to kind of fill in the details that I'm adding at this point. This video is only gonna get 20 minutes in, as I said, and it's gonna be nowhere near what it looks like on the right, which is Gosh, I'm not sure how many hours of work, but maybe 10, 20, I don't know. I don't really track that stuff very well. Here's me using the brush in my slapping technique, just kind of bapping at the board, just trying to get some color in there, hoping for some weird sort of brush shapes that uh, don't look like they were, you know, made by hand, but just random. You might also notice that the painting I'm working on is taller than the one on the right, the final. After staring at it for a long, long time, after a lot of the detail went in, I decided to crop it down to the golden mean, which is something that I do sometimes if a composition is, isn't working. I'll take it down to one of these sort of standard formats just to see if that helps the composition at all. And in this instance, I think it did a great job of sort of uh, unifying the piece. Now you can see that I'm starting to add the car in, switching to some black paint after just using the green and the white. Uh, to, to start. Everything's muddy and loose and all this underpainting you know will be there in the final. I don't tend to obliterate things or I, and I never scrape them off or wipe them out. I just tend to paint over it and let the layers infuse the texture. And again if you look at the right side there's lots and lots of detail to come and uh, even some uh, colored pencil was used in there. But right now I'm just using stuff right out of the tube, the white, the green, the black, and just dabbing it on, kind of feeling out, you know, the shape of the cave, how detailed it's going to be, trying to figure out if it's going to have a floor or a, a wall, what, whatever that's going to be. I'm, I'm kind of just stumbling through it here, literally, making all kinds of, you know, uh, tries and changes, mixing the, the black paint with the white paint, super rough, gestural almost, just trying to keep it loose and, and natural looking. This could take a long time and if I get stuck, like I just got stuck right there, I will, you know, keep that same color going but start putting it into other parts of the composition to sort of unify things. Here I got bored with the cave or stuck with the cave, wasn't doing what I thought, so I was like, I'll leave it alone. Okay, let's put a little shadow on the waterfall and then uh, a little bit on the car and I went over the top. So I often grab a, a towel or a rag and I just dab to pull the extra color out or the extra water. If I'm working flat like I often do, like, like I mentioned before, it's really easy to kind of come straight from above and just blot little bits and pieces out. Almost, almost very strategically do paint removal that way or water removal that way. But often I want to let it sit and flow and mess about and, and make its own choices. I'm adding a brighter, lighter green in now. So I've got right now a black, a white, uh, a dark green, and now a light green. Mix in. There might be a tiny bit of blue mixed in with the white actually. But this light green is just pulling out some of the highlights, the shape of the, the mountainside that I want. Some of this is still going to be there at the final. You'll really be able to see the, that bright color, which is too bright now, modeled back by layers and layers of a little bit of, of the, the black and the darker green that will mix in there. And really those are the main colors. I might have added a little bit of uh, 
some kind of a burnt sienna or something later, but that warm tone of the background, the peach, is just gonna live the whole way through. So at about 20 minutes, I decided to call it quits. Figured that was a good enough example of how a painting started. There was no sketch, there was no, no drawing on the board, literally just paint on board and go. And uh, at this point, I was gonna lay it down flat and let it dry for a while so I could come in and start doing the next layers. Might be vertical, might be back on the flat, but I'll be back and forth with that kind of technique until the painting is finished. And that's how I do paintings on recycled wood.